Hi all the students. Today we are going to study Ethernet frame format. The Ethernet frame format is also known as IEEE 802.3. So the standard for Ethernet frame format is known as IEEE 802.3. So IEEE you know stands for International uh, Organization for Electronics and Electrical Engineers. So these are the standards that have been made by the Institute of Electronical and Electrical Engineers. So the standard, the version of the standard for IEEE frame format is 802.3. So basically you call it either Ethernet frame format or you call it IEEE 802.3. It's the same thing. Now moving on the Ethernet frame format as we said. So we will study the format of the Ethernet frames today. Ethernet protocol is a MAC sublayer protocol, right? So this is a protocol basically and a protocol of which layer? Of the MAC sublayer. Now we all know that MAC or the medium access control is a sublayer of the data link layer the ethernet protocol was designed to operate at 10 megabits per second so the speed at which it was designed to be operated was 10 megabits per second now we'll uh, have a look at ethernet with various types of cablings what are the different types of cablings that can be used with an ethernet frame format so the following uh, figure summarizes or the following table summarizes those different uh, kind of cablings that are used for basically baseband 802.3 LANs. The characteristic or the cable, if it is a medium cable, then for 10 base 5, it is a thick coaxial cable. For 10 base 2, it is a thin coaxial cable. For 10 base T, it is a twisted pair. For 10 base F, it is an optical fiber. Now, look, coming at the maximum length of each cable or segment. So, for 10 base 5, the maximum length of each segment is 500 meter. For 10 base 2, the maximum length is 200 meter. For 10 base T, that is for the twisted pair, it is 100 meter and for the optical fiber it is 2 kilometers. Then if we come at the topology, for the thick coaxial cable that is 10 base 5, the topology is bus. For the thin coaxial table that is 10 base 2, the topology is again bus. For the twisted pair cable that is 10 base T, the topology is the star topology and for the optical fiber that is 10 base F, the topology is again star topology. Advantages? The advantages are that it is used for connecting workstations with tap-on cable. You can connect various workstations with a single with the taps on cables. Then the advantages, this is the advantage of the thick coaxial cable that you can use it for connecting workstations with the taps on cables. The advantage of thin coaxial cable, it is low cost cable. The advantage of twisted pair cable, in the existing environment can use hub and connect the stations using the twisted pair cables. That is with the help of hubs you can connect twisted pair cables. This is the advantage of 10 base T or twisted pair cable. Then coming on to the advantage of optical fibers or the 10 base F. The advantage of optical fibers is that it has good noise immunity and good to use. So we always prefer good noise immunity for lesser disturbance in the received signals. So these are the advantages of the various cables used for baseband 802. For the baseband 802.3 LANs. Now, eight, IEEE 802.3 or the Ethernet frame format as we call it, it accesses the channel using one persistent CSMA CD method in LANs. So, we have already studied one persistent CSMA CD. You can check out the video on one persistent CSMA protocols. 
So the A02.3 frame format of the Ethernet basically accesses the channel using which protocol of CSMA using one persistent CSMA along with CD that means it has collision detection also met also incorporated in it in where in the local area networks. Now if I look at the frame structure for IEEE 802.3, this is also known as the MAC frame structure because the Ethernet frame format is used in the MAC sub layer of the data link layer. So we also call it the MAC frame structure for IEEE 802.3. Remember IEEE 802.3 is the standard for the Ethernet frame format. So now let's have a look at the format. It starts with a preamble. Basically, you can see there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 fields in an Ethernet frame format. The first field is for the preamble. The second field is for the start delimiter of frame. The third field is for the destination address. The fourth field is for the source address. The fifth field is for the length of data field. The sixth field is for the data itself. The seventh field is for the pad. And the eighth field is for the frame check sum. Now let's see what all these different fields mean. Now as you saw the first field was the preamble. So what is the preamble? This field is basically 7 bytes or 56 bits long. So that means you can have at most 56 bits in the preamble field with a sequence of alternate ones and zeros. So there is an alternate sequence of ones and zeros in the preamble field like this as you can see here 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0. 1, 0. So the preamble field will always have an alternate sequence of ones and zeros like this. So this pattern basically helps the receiver to synchronize and get the beginning of frame. So whenever the receiver receives this kind of a uh, pattern in a frame, it quickly identifies that this is the beginning of a frame and it does not confuse it with the already received frame. So it immediately recognizes that this is the beginning of the next frame. So the preamble is always the first field of the frame or the beginning of the frame. So the moment a receiver receives these alternating bits of ones and zeros, it recognizes that this is the beginning of a new frame. So it knows that it is a completely new frame. Now the next field the next field is the starting delimiter as you saw that the second field was the starting delimiter or the start delimiter of the frame so what is the starting delimiter it is also known as sd in short this field is one byte long now you know there are eight bits in one byte so basically eight bits are reserved for the start delimiter that means max it can have or maximum it can have eight bits it has a pattern of 101010 and double one. So this is the pattern of the starting delimiter. 101010 and then a double one. This start delimiter is, or the SD also indicates beginning of a frame. Again, after preamble, you uh, the receiver encounters this pattern and it knows that this is the beginning of a frame and ensures that the next field will be a destination address right so the receiver upon receiving this bit sequence knows that this is still the beginning of the frame and after this it can expect the destination address that means that particular address for which the frame is meant so address here can be a single address or a group address if you are broadcasting or multicasting then in that case it can be a group address and if you are transmitting it to a single uh, destination then it can be a single address so there is no restriction on what kind of an address it can be it can be a single address or a group address so the moment the receiver receives this kind of a bit pattern after the preamble bit patterns it knows that after this i can expect the address of the destination that means the uh, node for which this frame is destined. Now next is the destination address. As you saw the third field in the Ethernet frame format was the destination address. So what is the destination address? It is also known as DA in short. This field is 6 bytes long. So 6 bytes means there are there is 8 bits in 1 byte. So 6 into 8, 48 bits long. So you can have maximum of 40 bit, 48 bits in this field. It contains the physical address of the 
destination of course so that means upon receiving a frame various so, uh, nodes check the uh, frame and look for the destination address if the destination address of the node in the node field is of that particular node which is checking it it will keep it otherwise the remaining nodes will discard it so with the destination address the receiving nodes get to know whether that particular frame is for them or for some other node if it is for them they will keep it if it is not for them they will discard it then is the source address or the essay now you saw that the fourth field in the ethernet frame format was the source address you also call it essay this field is six bytes long again same as the destination address field that means 48 bits long that means you can have maximum of 48 bits in this particular field it contains the physical address of the sender just like the destination address contains the physical address of the receiver the source address contains of the physical address of the sender that means the address of the source the node that initiated the transmission or the node that transmitted that particular frame this field contains the address of that node next is the length of data field now you know that the fifth field is the length of data field so what is length of data field this is a two byte or a 16 bit long field it indicates the number of bytes in the data field right it tells that in the actual data field how many bytes will the actual data have the longest allowable value can be 1518 bytes right so after that basically length of data field tells you the number of bytes that the actual data will have after that is the data field so this is field this is for the actual data that you want to send so rest all that fields we saw were the control information the preamble the uh, start delimiter the destination address the source address the length of data field all were the control information that means information regarding the data on the frame that was being sent but the data field is the actual data here here uh, you can get the actual data that means this field contains the actual data that has to be transmitted so this field will be a minimum of 46 bytes long that means minimum number of bytes that you can store in the data field are 46 bytes and the maximum number of bytes that you can store in the data field are 1500 bytes Next is the pad field. Now this field can be 0 to 46 bytes. 0 means you can have nothing in the pad field also and you can also have up to 46 bytes in the pad field. When is it required? It is required if the data size is less than 46 bytes, right? As you saw that the minimum number of bytes in the data field need to be 46 bytes. So if there is a scenario wherein the data file data is less than 46 bytes then you have to fill in that space of minimum requirement with the help of pad field right you have to make it at least 46 bytes and if the data itself cannot make 46 bytes then you use pad fields or padding right just like when you purchase a shoe and you find that your foot is smaller than the shoe size so you use some kind of a padding cotton padding or something to fill in the extra space between your shoe and the and your foot so this is what the pad also does that is it provides the padding if the data is falling short if it is less than 46 bytes and you need to have a minimum of 46 bytes then in that case the padding or the pad field will will fill in that vacuum or fill in that required space so it is required if the data size is less than 46 bytes so in that case the pad field is used now frame checksum the after the pad field the frame checksum field is there and this is the last sorry the frame checksum field is there and this is the last field so the frame checksum field is also known as fcs this field is 4 bytes long that means 32 bits long you can have maximum of 32 bits in this field and it contains information about error detection now we've already studied error detection and error correction techniques using checksum so this is 
uh, the that particular field which contains information about the error detection so that if in case there is an error in the bits being transmitted if they are changed and not the original ones during the transmission so the using the fcs you can find out errors in the transmitted data so this is the frame checksum field which helps in detecting errors in the data being transmitted and this is the last field of the ethernet frame format now what should be the minimum and maximum length of the frame see minimum frame length is 64 bytes as i told you which is equal to 512 bits and the maximum frame length is 1518 bytes on 1518 uh, bytes which is equal to 12144 bits so that means an ethernet frame can have a minimum of 512 bits and a maximum of one th uh, sorry 12144 bits so the minimum length or lower limit for frame length is defined for normal operation of csms cd why do we define the lower limit that it must have at least 512 bits so that uh, there is a normal operation for the csms cd protocol this is required so that the entire frame is not transmitted completely before its first bit is received by the receiver right so this ensures that the entire frame is not transmitted completely we ensure it is ensured that at least the first bit of the frame is received by the receiver and then we transmit the second bit and so on for so for this the minimum length or the lower limit of the frame is set so that you can use the csms cd protocol and ensure that at least the first bit is received before transmitting the second bit and so on okay so if this happens then the probability of occurrence of collision will be high right if we do not have the minimum length or lower limit set for the frame then there is there are greater chances for the collision of data frames so therefore we can say that the ethernet frame must be of 64 bytes long at least and some of the bytes are header and trailer parts of the frame in these 64 bytes you know that some of the bytes are for the header and some are for the trailer parts of the frame now if we consider 6 bytes destination address right if i consider that the destination address has 6 bytes and 6 bytes for the source address and 2 bytes for the length field and 4 bytes for the frame checksum then in total how many bytes are there 6 plus 6 plus 2 plus 4 gives you 18 bytes then the minimum length of data will be 64 minus 18 which is 46 bytes so if the frame is less than 46 bytes then padding bit fields up the difference so if it is at least 46 bytes then padding field is not required but if it is less than 46 bytes then padding bits will fill up the difference to cover up the minimum limit now as per the 802.3 standard or as per the ethernet frame format standard frames maximum length or upper limit of the frame is 1518 bytes which excludes the preamble and the start delimiter that means if you exclude the preamble and the start delimiter fields then the maximum length should be 1518 bytes and not beyond that so if we subtract 18 bytes of header and trailer then maximum length will be 1500 bytes so this is the maximum permissible length of the ethernet frames so basically the minimum permissible length is 46 bytes size is 46 bytes and the maximum permissible limit is 1500 bytes after subtracting the 18 bytes of header and trailer so this is all about the ethernet frame format